Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay From the cross to the grave From the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high Hello, friends, and welcome to Lift, the Sunday night ministry of the Old Hickory Church of Christ, and we're glad that you've gathered together with us. During the month of December, we're going to be using these gatherings to talk about signs. Now, in the English language, words are funny. They can mean a lot of different things. One word can have multiple meanings, and it is that way with the word sign. For instance, if you're a hunter, it may be that there is a trace of some animal nearby. It could be a footprint, or it might be a nest. Those are signs. In mathematics, you're talking about whether a number is positive or negative. If you're talking about astrology and the constellations, we could talk about signs of the zodiac. Or... We might be talking about legal matters, how you can sign on the dotted line and that it indicates your approval. We even have sign language where we use gestures to communicate. Well, we're going to be talking about signs as a means of communication. That is that you can use words or numbers or symbols or colors or other things, gestures, to indicate the presence or the probability, the probable occurrence of something else. If this, then that. And when we look at it, signs can, well, they can inform us, they can instruct us, they can direct us. So let's think about how signs are used in our society. We think, for instance, about businesses. Businesses have signs. They tell you what kind of commercial activity they're engaged in. Those signs tell you where they're located. They tell you the hours of operation. They tell you whether they're open or closed. You have signs that indicate the prices of the goods in the store. It can go on and on as we talk about how signs are used in businesses. Signs are also used in, in uh, travel. We have mile markers that tell us our location. Those signs indicate where we are. And then we have signs that indicate how far it is to the next stop. We have signs that tell us where to get gas and where to get lodging. Uh, there's uh, where we can get something to eat. So we have signs that deal with, with businesses, with facilities like hospitals and where can I where can I board a train or where can I board a plane? We have it in our travel. We have it in elections. We have signs. You can tell by the color whether someone is from one party or the other. Or maybe there's a, a cartoon character on the sign, a donkey or an elephant. And you know instantly because those signs communicate in many different ways. Well, the point is the signs are a very prevalent uh, part of our lives. We use them, but God also uses them. And that's, that's what we're gathered to talk about tonight. When we go in the Bible to the book of John, 
We read in the first, uh, third chapter about a man by the name of Nicodemus who comes to Jesus and he said this. He said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Well, here we see there is this spiritual dimension of signs. We read at the close of this same epistle in John chapter 20, in verse 30, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you might have life in his name. It was true with Jesus, but it was also true of the apostles. In, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12, Paul is concerned about this congregation, and he reminds them of his involvement with signs. The signs of a true apostle were performed among you with utmost patience, with signs and wonders and mighty works. And in the general epistles, we read in the book of Hebrews about the importance of this phenomenon. It says in verse 3 of chapter 2, How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard, while God bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. The point is that signs are often evidence of something else. And so we have the Bible and it is using words to provide evidence of God and his will for our lives. It informs us and it directs us. We understand that there are signs in Scripture, and some of those are memorials, and some of those are miracles. Well, during our time together, what we want to do is to talk about some of the signs in the Old Testament and just see and notice how God was working and what God was saying through these supernatural events but then also notice how signs are not always miraculous. And we find some very compelling signs in the life of a Christian that communicate both to God and to our fellow man something about what's going on inside of our minds and our hearts. This is where we're going to begin, just with an introduction to signs. And then, in the coming weeks, we'll talk about some messianic signs and the greatest of all signs. Well, thank you for being a part of Lyft. I hope you enjoy your discussion, and I pray that we'll have a greater appreciation for how God can work through signs. God bless you. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky lord i lift your name on